This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code WALKINGDEAD. You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network, now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's The Walking Dead After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's The Walking Dead After Show. Hey guys, and what is happening? Welcome to The Walking Dead After Show. For all you guys who actually decided to watch The Walking Dead instead of the Oscars, we thank you. Rotating cast, as always, this season, <laughs> because people keep on getting killed off. Kristen and Megan got killed off last week, so we have joining us Stephen Lemieux. Hey guys, good to be here. As well as Nando Velasquez. Well, I'm usually here, but thank you. <laughs> I didn't say that. It was, I said they were killed off because we also have with us Rome Moore. Yes, yes. Hopefully, I don't get killed this week. I hope not. I was Dar we'll see. Daryl's missing, too. He's Dar coming. Oh, oh, yeah. Daryl's missing, too. You're Just right. like the show. When one black guy leaves, another black guy shows ABD, up. ABD. See, I'm glad I wanted another to make that down. show, but I was like, I don't know if I can, so I'm glad you did. Yeah. As yes. long as you see, made the joke. You're so, Tyrese coming in yeah. the middle to save the T -Dog's day. T-Dog's so, gone. Okay. Tyrese is here. Yeah. yeah. That's how it works. We notice it. We notice it. That's all I'm saying. And, guys, I'm not important. But I'm Dave. Klein. What's happening? <laughs> so, let's go ahead and jump right into the episode. The episode's name is Still, and Steve, you had a great reason for why it was called this. I don't know. It seemed it seemed like it was like a stillery, like because the moon shine and everything and she's trying to get her alcohol. Her first drink, that's kind of where I come behind it. And then, I mean, maybe just the there was a lot of stillness in the episode, I guess. I'd if agree. You, well, I said I thought it was like a, it actually technically was a bottle episode, even though it wasn't really a bottle episode for those of you who don't watch Community, is an episode of a sitcom where they just show one location and keep everyone in there. It's usually a clip show. This felt like that because you didn't get to see anything else but just Daryl and Beth. It's like that episode where they're trying to conserve money until you burn down a house, and then you waste all your <laughs> yeah. budget on that. That's where the budget got wasted. But speaking of house. burning down houses, what were your guys' favorite moments from this week's episode? Daryl's breakdown. Yeah. Yeah. I think because we've never seen anything like that. So for his character to finally lose that tough guy facade and have that for real breakdown, that emotional moment where you see that things really affect him, that was my favorite moment. That's why Either. he didn't want to drink, really. Yeah. He was like, I bet I, that's how I get when I get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> I think that backswing. The what? The backswing? Daryl's backswing on that, on that walker just to splatter the new clothes uh, Beth put on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was pretty great. Four. I just thought I don't. I just I kind of liked. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna save that one. I liked the whole beginning of the scene when they were in the trunk of the car, and yeah. it was kind of like a rainstorm uh, that that heard it was going by. It just felt like that typical like hiding out in a rainstorm type of feeling. And well, I, wasn't I, there I a rainstorm that. too? Like, I think it was there a was a rainstorm. It was a combination well. of both. And there were the walkers. Oh, okay. I think it was both. It was a herd going by and a and rainstorm. A rainstorm. Well, maybe it's all this LA weather lately. I know. I was yeah. gonna say it made me feel very LA. We've just had a lot of rain, way more than usual for LA. And Total. actually, you, it's basically enough rain. Like, I'm from Chicago, and I'd be like, wow, this is a lot of rain for Chicago. Hmm. So that that's how you know that it's real rain. But uh, my favorite moment in this episode was the moment with the peach schnapps when uh, Daryl just <laughs> broke it and busted it on the ground. I was going to say that, yeah. I, yeah. I figured that might have been yours. Yeah. I know, so, but, uh, yeah. Oh, well, it's ruined. Forever! Uh, <laughs> the moment is ruined! So speaking of that moment, though, with the rain, let's go ahead and start with the intro of the show mm -hmm. and kind of the um, the, lo the first location there, which is this campsite that they have going. But first we get them hiding around, popping out of the bushes, and they, the, all, the horde passes by them as they're hiding on the car. And literally you have five minutes of silence, no talking as they're in the trunk of this car. So really um, an interesting way for them to start off the show. I got a shout out to Steve because during the show when they first got in the trunk, he you pretty much said seven minutes in heaven, and, and I thought I thought that was pretty funny. Was and pretty it. much this whole episode, I mean, too bad Kristen's not here because she loves uh, she loves her some Daryl. But this is like the perfect episode if you're a big Daryl fan. She's you like, get, if only I could have been Beth. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You just stuck take, with it. Take any scenes and Photoshop Kristen's face and, <laughs> and she'd just be like, I was there, I was there. She would rather be in this episode than at the Oscars, I'm sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we have on the chat some people talking about their. Uh, 
their favorite moments. Laura Jones saying Daryl and Beth flipping the bird at the house. I think that was her favorite moment. Then Bahaha Bao saying uh, your moment that you were talking about with Daryl's breakdown. Uh, she was saying that that was like a stab to her heart. Poor Daryl. Oh, yeah, there were women crying everywhere <laughs> when that happened. She, and Joseph Bose are throwing out, Daryl went through a lot in this episode. Pat throwing out his moment, too. I like the fight scene between Beth on the one zombie. That was intense for a moment. Uh, he actually thought that she could have been a goner. So uh, lots of great moments in this episode. But, yeah, with the whole five minutes and seven minutes in heaven thing, we got a whole lot of... Uh, Possible moments with Beth as they were playing the game later on, where we were like, "Where is she going with these questions?" Yeah, mm -hmm. like, uh, are they are they trying to ship make well, people ship these characters right so now? She's so young to me, though. I'm like, if they hook up, that's gonna be gross yeah. to me. How but old is she supposed to be in the show right now? I think she's supposed to be like six. 16, I would guess. Really? 16. Yeah. But you know, it was kind of like a foreshadowing because this whole episode did feel like, I want to get drunk. Yeah. I want to get wasted. Let's play. I, it really felt like she was trying to set up a. Should have been uh, called bait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of oh. was that. <laughs> Leading up to it. Oh if there was God. Not, <laughs> this clubhouse doesn't have the Ugg boots I wanted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, this felt like it could have. she could have been on a reality show. Like, this yeah. should be like a Kardashian show or something it like really, that. It really. You was know acting. what? It kind of did. It's just like. <laughs> Literally, like, the Zompocalypse comes. It's just that one, like, reality diva, like, I just want to get drunk and go get wasted, guys. Like, <laughs> oh, my God, where's the booze? Now back to Beth and the Dead. Yeah. yeah. That, so, I think we should actually make that internet video. Let's, let's that make it happen. It actually could be a pretty good viral video, but actually. Totally, there's totally, like, there's no, there's no dialogue for the first five minutes, and then it just slowly seeps in over the next half hour, and then... The, the second half of the show, you can't get her to shut up. It is a giant, and you're right, that's a great point. It is literally like as the episode progresses, mm. you get from no talking to giant monologues from both of them. So it actually is this giant progression in that sense in the way that they did the writing of this episode. Yeah, I like that. But let's yeah. talk about the, uh, the actual campsite that they'd set up where they're eating snake. They, they actually have a pretty nifty place, but Beth's not too happy because she's like, I just want some booze, man. Gotta get that alcohol. I've never had my drink. Never got my drink on. She needed that drink. <laughs> she really needed yeah. that. I think it's really just a a younger person's perception of what alcohol is. Because when when people tell talk to you as a kid about alcohol, you're like, oh, I don't like the taste of beer, ha ha ha. Mm -hmm. But then you see that people are like, oh, you drink to forget, and you drink to deal with situations and things like that. And that's what parents say, like you drink to deal with depression yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So I think from a younger person's stance towards alcohol, she thinks that alcohol is going to make it better. She thinks that this is something that'll make her feel better. Yeah. Or yeah. I mean, I kind of take it like from me, from my perspective, and, and that's a, that could be the case. But for me, it's just like that young thing of like, I'm a kid. I feel like, man, like when I get to drink alcohol, that's when I'm grown up. And that's when I get to, it seems like such a big deal. And then now that we're past that age, I'm like, gives a shit it's just alcohol shut up beth like that's my perception now but when i was a kid i would have been like yeah alcohol this is so exciting well this is kind of similar if you think about it to the first episode this season this half season with rick and carl where you saw like carl was kind of looking back at his childhood a little bit or, or, or the temptations of being a kid and he yeah. was kind of struggling with being a kid and being an adult in this world yeah and it almost mm -hmm. seems like beth is kind of in her own way kind of dealing with that too because this is something a, re a rebellious teenager yeah. would do with her dad you know like i want to get drunk i want to go out i want to live yeah. and she's you know pushing that on daryl yeah the, the zombie apocalypse is not a good place for teenagers yeah and hormones what's, <laughs> yeah, so. well, what's with all these vices though carl gets 112 ounces yeah. of pudding and now beth gets 112 <laughs> ounces of moonshine <laughs> I guess the time to do all those things that you weren't allowed to do. It's like, yes, I can do anything. Yeah. But I think more importantly, I mean, she does relate alcohol to her dad. Don't forget her dad did have a drinking problem yeah. in yeah. the past, too. So, th again, Herschel's death from the uh, mid-season finale is still weighing heavy on everyone. I'm sure we'll talk more about it with Daryl, too, but uh, it's weighing heavy on everyone. So this is how she's coping, too. So, so Pat changing his mind on the chat about his favorite moment, saying that the Tiger Woods moment with uh, the blood splatter getting on her and needing to take it off, ruining her gear is his favorite moment. But speaking of that, golfers like to booze it up, right? So oh, yeah. the, uh, Beth and Daryl end up finding this country club. And thank God the grass hasn't grown. Yeah, the grass has not grown. The grass has not grown, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Someone's been mowing that lawn for them in the uh, country club. But uh, they end up in a country club, and we get this whole new scene with a lot of background info, and kind of what I was talking about last week, which is uh, what I enjoyed from the show that they do a lot of times with show, not tell. You get 
Uh, a lot of that in this episode, too, with what seems like a bunch of campers who maybe some sort of um, everyone was there trying to survive together. But also a lot of more backstory about, like, this darker thing that must have happened there that we never really get with, like, the rich bitch sign that was on the one girl. You imagine situations that would be infinitely more entertaining than this episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, let's let's talk about that because I think it was, yeah. I, I agree, there's something really weird about that golf house. First of all, we saw the hanging zombies, which I thought yeah. was really cool. Mm -hmm that people tried to kill themselves, but they, that was a poor way to kill yourself because you turned into a zombie yeah, and you're just right. hanging on, a, on a thread. Yeah. Well, but there's something morbid about the rich bitch cutting her in half, putting her on a mannequin, yeah. and putting yeah. rich That's bitch. That's super morbid. It really reminded me of, like, Fallout. It reminded me of, like, the end of the world series where there's, like, raiders and then there's the, the, the crazy mm -hmm. people and things like that. So... I mean, we get that morbidness, and then you don't know what actually happened. We get, what is that sign? It says, Welcome to Dog Trot. Welcome to the Dog Trot, yeah. which is interesting. I actually pulled it up. I actually did a quick Google search. For some reason, my thing's going weird now. And a dog trot is a type of house, according to what I was able to find. It's not. It wasn't. It was a little hard to find, but it's like two log cabins next to each other with uh, an opening in between for dogs and people to go through from one side of mm -hmm. the building to the other side, an outdoor area in between. Well, it almost seems like one of those army type of terms in the sense where yeah. like people yeah. call themselves that to sound more either badass or like you were saying with the Raiders from Fallout that whole concept yeah um, that, that's kind of what I imagine with that welcome to the dog trial like it's like welcome to the dog house where we're all at like this type this one group but um, I would have liked to have known more about that place because it definitely seemed like there was a story there yeah, yeah there well, was I, I think this, I think the story that you can really judge from a place like that is it's all close quarters mm. And that's yeah. kind of all you really need to know, is like when there's close quarters, that's the reason the prison could survive so long, is because it's all spread out. If something happens here, there's going to be time for people to find out about it here and deal yeah. with it. Over at a place where it's like literally you see the, there's like sleeping bags on top of each other. It looked like they were throw up, it looked like there were a lot of sick people. Yeah, and there were a lot of bodies. A lot yeah, of bodies. A lot, a lot of, bodies of bodies in that place. So. And they were still like in their sleeping bags too, a lot of them. They, yeah. they had them not... They had to have been killed the proper way mm -hmm. because they weren't walkers for all those bodies. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, I guess I was imagining like the p three people who were hung killed some of them and put them there. That's what just I would like, think. Yeah. That's what you would imagine. But I, I just wish there was a little bit more there to try and dissect what the rich bitch thing is. Even though I'd imagine it's a country club thing, like all the people who are rich there, maybe caddies versus. Yeah. Well, here's the thing about the hanging golfers. yourself. That is not. I don't think, at least, it's not an instantaneous way to kill yourself. You know, it's that's a long it ass a process. Yeah. You know, you're suffocating yourself. It's it's drawn out. So again, just the way it, it's got to be something to be said for the way they probably killed themselves, or, or even if they were the ones that if did they it. They did it. Maybe yeah, some other true. people they didn't. did them did yeah. to them. That's and a good point. You might you might find out about it later in in the series. I'm not sure at this point, but if you think about how they. I mean, I don't, I don't want to go too into the comic books at right. all, but like, as you know, there's different settlements and there's different colonies and things like that. Right. So you never know who went through there, and you never know yeah. if they infiltrated and then killed them in their sleep and then hung some of them. Because yeah. Welcome to Dog Trot looks like it might have been painted after everyone was dead, maybe and then it was the people those, left. Maybe it was those thugs from last week. Maybe they're part of the group. They went around and they go. found that place. You never know. Could I mean, it seems like, like it seems like... That's a pretty uh, massive murder, though, for like four guys. Yeah, well, maybe but it was this, more than them. I mean, it's the end of the world, Dave. It's the end of the world. Yeah. You're going to kill one person, you might as well kill all of them, right? The thing that I found interesting about it, yeah. going back to the, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going back to the, uh, the rich bitch thing, and somebody just brought it up in the chat roll, is that it was almost like a class thing. Yeah. They're like, what, what were the levels? What was set up? And because the, the lady still had on her, her pearl necklace, yeah. her pearl earrings. Well, that's kind of what I was saying with maybe like the caddy. Like, yeah, you have your caddies there. You have the, like the workers. Because there is a working class at ending golf club. I used to be a caddy when I was a kid. And it was very different in terms of like who was actually working at the club and the actual mm. golfers who went yeah. there. So, yeah. Well, also looking I agree at, with that sentiment. Looking at where authority can take itself. And who pe the people who think they deserve to be in power are the people who would be richer. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a place like a country club, everybody holds up in this place, the rich people try to take power, but they're trying to order everyone around when mm -hmm. they're not doing anything, and it turns into a mutiny of sorts. Yeah. So apparently it actually is an answer from Baha ha Val, that I guess was the one that you saw saying that um, apparently it was a walker, like this was an answer from 
Talking Dead, the show we don't talk about, that <laughs> there were walkers, uh, there was, the walkers were country club members that were killed by the staff in a class struggle. Ooh. So it was, in fact, a uh, class struggle. Interesting. So That would be interesting. You know what it also uh, reminds go. me of? It reminds me of Bioshock. The first Bioshock. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Classic. That was such a good Rapture. Game. Really good game. I may be distracted yeah. now the whole rest of the episode thinking of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> go Beth on her quest for alcohol, being kind of uncautious in some ways, also mad at Daryl. She thinks she can take care of herself. She's reaching for some booze, finally gets it when all of a sudden a walker attacks her from behind, or she's about to get the booze at the beginning. And then finally they find a bar. <laughs> and Tarzan yell. I really bar. like alcohol, guys. <laughs> I guess I wasn't that excited about the bar, <laughs> but I, for her, she was it's excited so about it. News. It's all good. <laughs> she was the one excited about it. It's so, all good. Um, so after they go through, the, this is after th they go through the store, which we pretty much talked about all the elements throughout. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I was talking before about the store part, so we can kind of skip that, but. Uh, as they get to this bar, she f looks and all she can find are peach schnapps. And so at this point, Daryl's not really saying anything at all. As she finds it, she's trying to clean off some a bloody glass to drink oh peach schnapps. Oh my god, yeah, that yeah. was just so weird. Yeah, <laughs> it's like just you got the bottle, just take it to the head, drink it straight yeah. out. Of the right, bottle. Yeah. Like, let's go, like, do it. You want to take your first drink? I want to get drunk. Well, drink. Like, yeah, here it is. I'm it's making a mixed drink. It's called. It's called the I'm gonna die. It's zombie <laughs> yeah. blood. And peach schnapps. Ugh. Yeah, it's like you don't know where, what blood that is. Like, where would you even like? She's gone, lived here for long enough that you think like, oh, if I drink blood, that would probably poison me. Well, one of the things you gotta you gotta remember about Beth though is that she was very she's been very closed off from this whole apocalypse thing for a long time. That's true because there's yeah. the barn and then the prison. Yeah, yeah, so like she hasn't really aside from moving one from one place to the other and the end of each place. She hasn't really had to survive on her own outside of those places for very long at all. Well, there, I guess, like, in the show, not the comics, but in the show, there was a period of time in between the barn and them actually finding the prison, like, yeah. seven months or something like that. So, in the show, there actually would have been a long time that she was scavenging. So, I guess, like... Was it seven months? It was, it was pretty long, because you have, like... I, I think it was a long time. I, mean, I, I just don't feel like it could be because, like the the I, prison's so close to the previous neighborhood with Rick and everything. Like they would have found it so much so sooner. But I, when that season started, I remember that season because they had just uh, gotten run away from the barn. Right. Well, the prison was overhead. It was. Yeah. It, they showed it in they that last it, shot. It, we didn't. They didn't know it was there. Yeah. And I remember when they came back, they said it had been. They but, literally said like seven or eight months. Yeah. Yeah. They said it'd been a long time. It's yeah. been a while. Okay. Well, then Rick. Just should have thought about that sooner because he's a cop. He knows there's a prison there. He yeah. knows where it is. He should be like, oh, well, that's not his neighborhood. Yeah, well, yeah. that's not, not, not his neighborhood. He, he was originally. You don't really have GPS in the post-apocalyptic <laughs> world, anyway. Yeah, so, but if you're a cop, you know the prisons in the a area prison somewhere. And it just seems like he was close enough. I mean, he was close enough to get back to what's the guy's name who set up that whole town. His son had died. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, maybe you know like what county it's in, but you might not actually yeah. know what county you're in at the moment because you're just. It's okay, I thought it was. I thought map. it was sooner than that. I didn't think but, she was scavenging that. But long yeah, in the, in the books it was. It was right okay, away. But yeah. in the uh, in the show, in the show it was a it was while. Yeah. So, uh, regardless, though, she starts <laughs> crying as she's about to take her first drink, and it's just because it wasn't everything she would built up in her head it would be. Because it's just Daryl's pissed off, throwing darts in the. <laughs> I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that. Yeah, I, don't, uh, I don't think it's that either. It's you having well, your first drink with like your father, or your well, sister. That's what, well, or that's something what I meant when I said she's. That's what it's about to lead to, isn't it? Oh, I'm okay. sorry, That's dude. what it's leading to, man. <laughs> Don't I, throw peach schnapps at me, please. I'm going to throw darts at you like you're a club member. Oh, oh, peach schnapps is the perfect drink for a girl her age anyway. It really crying is. Out, which it's, is funny. That's the ironic thing. So, girls, thing, like, if you're listening and you're 16, peach schnapps is the greatest <laughs> drink. But it's like, don't drink peach schnapps. Have a real drink like <laughs> moonshine. Like Even like guys are like, oh, moonshine, <laughs> what? <laughs> no. I'm a city boy. Just give me some scotch. Yeah. Some scotch. I do want to say I'm amazed with the whole moonshine thing how like she grimaced for a moment and then she was like oh it's fine I just kept drinking i'm like yeah. man you'd be like mm -hmm. one drink you'd be like oh it must have been good especially moonshine. your first like sip yeah. of ever of alcohol with moonshine you didn't act bad enough beth i'm sorry but really that, whole, that whole peach schnapps thing i just felt it was about her dad that whole moment yeah. the, the re reason why she stopped it was it was about her dad at that moment yeah and what she's turned into it's like my dad's not here i I think she was looking for the alcohol to replace her father. And there she was in this moment. And like you said, kind of like, here's Daryl, not even paying attention, just 
playing darts. Well, right, and that's what yeah. I meant by it. it's just like she, I think she wanted more of a moment connecting with somebody yeah. doing it. Yeah. So that right. was well, with, with her, well, hopefully with her father. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, with her losing Herschel and everything that she's going through, and like you said, not really having to. I'm, yeah, she was out there scavenging, but we don't know what happened in that time period when they were gone for so long. Yeah. So, you know, let's say she still didn't go through anything major because back then Rick was really gung ho about protecting people. He wasn't Farmer Rick yet. Yeah. So yeah, it was a long time before that. So maybe she was protected all the way through, and this was her way of, you know, this is her coping mechanism. I, yeah. I don't have my father. I don't have anybody to connect to. Yeah. I will say this just to bring it back uh, because I really like this moment too, and I want to bring it up. They really know how to skin a car. And use the parts for the car for yeah. like zombie protection <laughs> services, like using the using the car mirror to start a fire, yeah. and then a trip wire with hubcaps. Yeah, I thought yeah. that's kind of ghetto they in a way. Good. Like if a car gets stuck somewhere and you like strip the car, it's kind of like that was that version of the zombie apocalypse or something like that. I thought it was interesting, like someone hunting and using the whole animal. Yeah, it's just, yeah. The whole yeah. Car. yeah it is like that. That's a good point. It's yeah. such a juxtaposition though, because they do smart things like that the whole episode. And then there's and the, the ending. ending. And yeah. you're just like, yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. what is it wrong is. with you? Guys? They go from something really brilliant on how they get to use a car or or just the way we see the world, like the hanging zombie mm -hmm. still alive, well, and they, then you go to burning a house. It's because that's end. why you uh that's why these characters don't usually get drunk. Well I wouldn't even <laughs> it's a very big turn. I wouldn't even say going from that to that. I would say going from hiding out and taking any cover you can, even if it's the trunk of an old ass car and tying it shut to be in there all night. Yeah. To having a place where you have like doors and windows and things you can barricade mm -hmm. off, to deciding to get drunk when it's nighttime, you can't see, you don't know where you're going, and lighting everything Just on fire <laughs> while you're wasted going out into the down. wilderness. <laughs> Let's sing some George Clinton while we're at it. <laughs> God. <laughs> the roof. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Beth and Daryl, after this, after they yeah. leave this place, they find another house that reminds Daryl of something which we'll get to. But before we do, I do want to say once again, as uh, we said at the beginning of the show, this episode is brought to you mm. guys by Squarespace. And if you guys want 10% off on using Squarespace, please use our code. It's Walking Dead. That's all you have to do to type it in. And Squarespace is used for making websites. And I don't know about you guys, but I I've been making my own websites for a long, long time at this point, since I was in junior high. And a lot of it at this point, now that we got on the web basically 3.0, it's a lot more difficult to make your website mm -hmm. look professional and look really up to date if you just code it, which is what I always did. So it's at the point where it's now that like you want to use places like Squarespace so you can have a professional website because at this point in this day and age, if you want to advertise yourself, it's really better to use things like that. I have your people, own web page. Yeah, all the big people are doing their own website. If you want to keep up with people, you got to keep up with the new technology. And it's great to have help, like some a professional from Squarespace helping you set up your own website. I actually did it for like my photography website I used Squarespace made it yeah. had galleries and everything and like you it's simple you could just go hell Nando likes scotch we could make nando like scotch.com a gallery of <laughs> all like the scotches that, that nando <laughs> likes one for each year and then you could have a whole biography and Anything you want to talk about, each scotch, scotch. Yeah. and the moods he gets in with scotch, each scotch. If you're watching on YouTube or on Scotch, uh, scotch. Can, we, can we have scotch. like one page for your moonshine section, though? <laughs> That's what I want to see. Sure, we'll do a moonshine section. And then we'll have the Peach Schnapps <laughs> website for the 16 year old girls. Yeah, who want exactly. To. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, I mean, it'll be about just Peach Schnapps, the one yeah. brand. Anything you need, it. I mean, you, it'll hook it up for you. Plug in, just download them, throw them on the site, and it works. By the way, can we consider that a plug for Peach Schnapps in the episode, or an anti plug in a sense? <laughs> <laughs> peach I know they did actually name it, nuts. so they name dropped that. I'm gonna show I'm gonna show my age really quick since we're just talking about the alcohol because it, it, for some reason this came up. Um, but if you've ever if you've ever seen the Honeymooners, and that's an old old show, it's yes. only uh, really old there. people. There was, Stones was based there was, off of it. There was an episode where Ralph and Norton wanted to get drunk, so uh, they 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 want they demanded their wives to bring them alcohol or something to drink. So they brought iced tea, and they said, "Here's your alcohol." And they just spent the whole like this whole show like drinking iced tea and going, "Oh, I'm so wasted right now." And I almost feel like you could have done that with Beth because uh, you've never yeah. tasted that's anything at all. That's a good point. All. You really yeah. could. But you could have done that and seen her go. I'm yeah, you just get that expectation <laughs> yeah. in your mind that you're gonna feel different. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The uh, placebo effect. <sighs> yeah. Well, you know how like on Amazon the the sales for 112 ounces of chocolate pudding went like through the roof yeah. after that so episode. Did they really? really? Yeah. Like there's there's probably a, like a hundred extra reviews on 112 ounces of chocolate pudding. People probably bought it just as, but, like as a thing. But are there gonna be reviews now? P schnapps like. 
Man, pea shop shouldn't be your first drink. Not that crap. Uh, I, I bought a bottle of this, but then realized I was being a pussy and threw it yeah. on the ground. Went and found a distillery. Uh -huh. Went and found uh -huh. some moonshine, like a real man's supposed to do. Even a real woman is supposed to drink moonshine first. Please. Get it right. After my father's head got cut off, I really needed a drink, yeah. so I bought peach snaps and decided against it in the end. Not for those whose fathers hasn't been cut off. So, speaking of moonshine, let's move on to <laughs> the fact that they find this random house in the show, and Daryl sees it and immediately goes, oh, it's better than a liquor store. That's how I imagine he talks, even though I know exactly how he talks. Uh, so he says, but man, this place is better than a liquor store. And sure enough, he knows that just because, as he talks about later, it's basically just like the house he grew up in, there is basically a distillery for moonshine right there. So The only unbelievable thing about this episode was that there would be any left. Yeah. Because the first thing, when people start dying and zombies start coming back to life, people would be drinking that thing like crazy. You figured with all the people nearby in the golf course that somebody might have known about it. Yeah. Nah, it's because yeah. everyone was like, moonshine, I'd rather die. Plus, <laughs> 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 too busy drinking peach schnapps. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Guys, are, pe are peach schnapps, schnapps I'd rather die. Out. That's why peach schnapps was the only thing left. I think that's why they hung themselves. Exactly. That, that They're like, down to just that. It's yeah. only peach schnapps, <laughs> damn it! I can't I drink myself out of this. I'm going to kill myself out of <laughs> yeah. this. Well, it doesn't exactly get you very drunk, peach schnapps. Yeah, no. 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 I guess if you just drink just that straight, that, that amount left, and you haven't had anything for a while. Hashtag Schnapspocalypse. Schnapspocalypse. <laughs> Schnapspocalypse. Worse than the Zompocalypse by far. <laughs> so much worse. All the liquor on Earth has been turned into it's... peach. See, here's, right. here's the thing, though, with the whole Zompocalypse thing where it's just the two of them. Uh, and then Beth keeps on trying to get Daryl to drink because she's like, what, you just, you're just going to like watch? And like that's not fun. It's just like, no, it's called, called being... It's called being smart. It's like yeah. it's called, there, are, hey. there are walkers everywhere killing everybody. Like maybe you should have one person on watch. That's called being smart, Beth. Like really? Well, here was what was weird really? about. Really? Here was what was he weird about the whole thing. I really liked in the beginning this whole like I want to go get a drink, I want to move on because I felt it was a continuation from two weeks ago in their in their little vignette mm -hmm. of what I was saying was people surviving versus people living. Daryl yeah. mm -hmm. Daryl's really depressed and he was just going to survive for the moment and Beth wants to live and she wants to go out there and find other people and do things and I felt even even the although it sounded very Kardashian or very Real Housewives I want to get a drink it still felt like I don't want to just go on automatic and survive just for the sake until someone kills me. Yeah. I want to. I want to live. I want to live. Yeah. So then, all of a sudden, in this moment, now she's got some alcohol. I want to get drunk. Go, mm -hmm. go get drunk with me. And all of a sudden, Daryl's a responsible one. So I thought that was a little odd. Personally. Only thing they could have made it better was if Beth was carrying her shoes at the end of the episode. Well, I mean. <laughs> Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean, regardless though, with what you were saying though, that's that's still how they were at the beginning though. Was yeah. Beth wanted to go get drunk and Daryl just wanted to survive. And, and the thing is though, at this point they do end up both drinking. I'm just like, but if you're both drunk, that's a bad idea. Oh, yeah. Like you should way. know this, especially like. And no matter how much Beth begs, this is something you should know. Mm -hmm. Like when two people get drunk. During zombie apocalypse, <laughs> yeah, even when now, it's not the zombie apocalypse. Bad things happen. Yeah, yes, so exactly. Just imagine what happens with two drunk people in the zombie apocalypse. They wake up. They, they, they burn down. The a, I mean, what? They're like yeah. burned down a house or something. You, yeah. you cut down like, to the morning and they're in bed with a zombie. Yeah. It's like a threesome yeah. with a zombie. Like, like, what did I do last night? Oh, they're both and smoking. Like, yeah. It seems like that's where the entire episode was heading for a while. It looked like that's where Beth was trying to steer Daryl to go. Hey, get drunk with me. Hey, let's. Play hey, let's play this games. Never Have I Ever. Yeah. Never, Never Have I Ever Been in Handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a little bit of that, but it was obviously a little bit of I want to learn more about you. Yeah. yeah. And for whatever reason, maybe she figured people know that when they when they drink, they're a little loose in in their in loose lips as far as yeah. re revealing and and other ways. Let's be honest. But uh, that was possibly part of her plan too, just to get to know Daryl better. I am glad that she explained because as soon as they started playing Never Have I Ever, my first thought. Was I think I said it out loud? I was like, how how, she know? how would she know how, how to play? Know? Never have I ever. And yeah. then she immediately explains it that she had friends who mm. yeah. played it. When... Maggie probably be getting drunk and stuff. I watched Maggie play. Um, um, I love this because uh, again, we never get to hear anyone's backstory. We got to see Michonne's backstory, and that was the first time we've really seen any of these survivors' backstories. 
since like season one, since learning about Rick. And now here we go. We got like a nice little laundry list of things that that uh, Daryl has never yeah. done. Mm -hmm. And even just the whole uh, distillery, finding the distillery, he got to share a lot about his backstory yeah. too. Yeah. And later on in, in his story about him and Merle. Doesn't it worry you guys though? I mean, now that we know too much about Daryl, they're just going to kill him off. I mean, now that now that there's no mystery to the character, the internet you, is no. screaming. No, because you know that the you know the ratings would just plummet. Yeah, so it's yeah. just like we can't kill him. The ratings would, they're going to kill Daryl, and Daryl's going to be a zombie and kill Rick, and then the show will be awesome. Although yeah. they do put a lot of bait out there for Daryl to die with everything yes. Beth was saying. Yeah. So like she's talking about he's going to be the lone survivor, and that that makes you automatically think, oh well, he's going to die because you think he's going to be the lone survivor. Because it's a great game, by the way. The last survivor, yeah. Lone survivor. The lone survivor. Except it's an indie game. It's well, you yeah, also okay. you also get this new re revelation with Daryl, where if I could have done something, if I could have done something, so now you kind of see him as maybe a martyr character too to save yeah. somebody. Uh, yeah. Well, he said he he blames himself because I circled this uh, when when they were he was talking about the governor killing Herschel. He said maybe maybe because I stopped looking, maybe because I gave up. So it was about his search for the governor. He blames mm -hmm. he blames Herschel's death. The governor came right up to our door. Maybe because I stopped looking. So mm -hmm. so he's really like taking the full on brunt of the blame for everything that happened in the prison there. Yeah. So his his outburst, he went like forgive the usage of the term, but he yeah. went full on redneck. Oh yeah. Well, that's yeah. what he said he was. So so Joseph posed on the chat saying maybe alcohol can be a thing that gives people the courage slash adrenaline or adrelliance, if I'm there's a word I don't know you're trying to say there. Like Beth did kick zombie butt. Laura Jones saying, I like how Beth took the time to get to know Daryl and open up to him, thus making him open up, which he's never really done before. Daryl finds his self worth through other people, like he does with Rick and Carol, so it's definitely created a strong bond between these two characters. Faux life. Well, I'm he wondering why he said nothing. Rick or Carol when it's really Merle. Merle's the one who gave him the self worth through doing things for them. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I agree with the Rick and well, Carol. Well, he eventually became Rick and Carol after. Yeah, or, you know, yeah. just transitioned. Yeah, but but he said it himself before, and you even called it out when he was talking that he's nothing before before the apocalypse. Yeah. He was nothing. That was the good thing about this episode um, when it got to the end, and you realize these are two characters, and the Walking Dead universe is gonna go crazy when I say this. <laughs> but I have to clarify: these were the two nobody characters, Daryl before. Ah! <laughs> oh, <no! laughs> Daryl, before the zombie apocalypse started, was a nobody. Yeah. After the zombie apocalypse started, he was definitely a somebody. Oh, absolutely. But Beth has always been sick and fiddle. She's always been the, the scared one, the timid one. And this is her going through her transition mm -hmm. to be able to survive and to be the badass that Daryl is. Oh, absolutely. Now, I doubt she'll ever make it to his level, <laughs> obviously. But, you know, just seeing her start the journey that he already knows because that that's what he was kind of expelling as he talked to her. Well, yeah. But she all... even said she even said to him later on in the episode, "Be who you are, not who you were." Yeah. You know, yeah. put it away before it kills you. Well, yeah. She was talking about his past. Right. So, perfect. I think that's probably the most interesting part of the show in itself or the concept of the Walking Dead comics or otherwise is what people become after the fall. Yeah. And that's kind of like mm -hmm. um the governor for instance, he was just like some tax man and now mm -hmm. he's became who he was. Yeah. Um, in the comics even more so. So mm -hmm. ridiculously yeah. creepy in theirs. Uh, so, I mean, every character kind of has that arc, and I think that's what's so interesting about the show, is if it didn't, if they didn't have that before and after, then it wouldn't be as interesting, because you don't want to watch Rick be sheriff before and then Rick stay sheriff after. Yeah, so the, the only thing I'd say, though, with Daryl is, I mean, was anyone really surprised at all? Because, like, to me, that was his backstory already. I felt like I'd already established that in my mind. Yeah. Like, when he was saying that, I was like, well... Yeah. I think the big yeah. surprise was that, yeah, it wasn't even a surprise, really. It just, we finally got to see it I, I real. mean, I, I liked some of the things that Beth was asking him, and you get to find her assumptions on what people think of him. Like, have you ever been arrested? Which is what ends up setting him off. Yeah. But um, to me, it was like a lot of things that I pretty much assumed. And he, he had a good story, though, with the whole gun thing and all that, which was a, a nice, interesting story to lead into yeah. who he was and everything that he did. Well, don't forget that her, her boyfriend, who I can't never remember the name, the guy that died yeah. in episode nine, he was guessing, too, but he was, like, guessing he was a former cop mm -hmm. or whatever. So so if you listen to the stories that come up about Daryl, everyone, because he's such a rock star, he was such a rock star in the oh, prison far cooler than in the really beginning was. of the season was this cool backstory. Yeah. And yet we all kind of, I figured, had a feeling that it wasn't really that that kind of a story He's and this, cool. this episode yeah absolutely. well I think it's also for us as an audience you know as him being with Merle and even in the first season I think they referred to them as the rednecks and things like that Yeah. so you pretty much already just got this assumption that he wasn't anything more because that's a derogatory term well and don't forget a lot of the survivors didn't know Merle 
Right, but I'm saying for us, oh, as, for a, us. as an audience, I feel like for the, as an audience, you pretty much already knew that. Now, for mm-hmm. the characters in the, the prison, yes, they had no idea who Merle was. They don't yeah. know any of that part. But for us, we've been watching since season one. Yeah. So I think that's why, to me, and for anyone watching, it wouldn't be a surprise for any of us. Yeah, yeah. you immediately knew Merle was the alpha dog when it came to the brothers. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you think Daryl is an alcoholic? I mean, because it, like, it seemed like he was hesitant to drink, and then... As soon as he drinks, he turns into this other person. That's kind of how alcoholism is. And at the same time, it reveals like all of his insecurities and things like that. I don't think he's an alcoholic, but I will say that I, I, I did want to bring this up. That Don't forget, he had that altercation with Bob a yeah. Couple, yeah. Uh, at the end of last season when they were going on that medical supply run. Mm-hmm. Where he practically threw Bob to the zombies mm-hmm. over that. So I actually thought this was a really interesting episode for him considering what he did with Bob. And here he is with Beth. Who wants a drink, first of all? And then second of all, I want to bring up, uh, you know, the alcoholism is, is an interesting thing. I don't agree with that, but the one thing that we all thought was interesting was when they were ransacking the place and she was going for that spoon that said Washington, D.C., yeah. which I thought was yeah, interesting because like Abraham. Yeah, definitely. Good, yeah. uh, good but glad he, you brought that up. He, he went for money, mm-hmm. which I thought, this was before we learned eventually about his backstory, but I almost thought he was more of a thief. Obviously, it's like, look what he's going for. He's going for all this cash. Yeah, because he was also checking yeah. the, cash, the cash register. Yeah. 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 So I mean that's not really something you want for survival in a post-apocalyptic world unless yeah. unless you know society's rebuilt perhaps but it was just interesting that was his go-to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was interesting. I was yeah. I was wondering why he was grinding this stuff because it's like what what do you need? Yeah, yeah it's worthless. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. At this point, it's absolutely worthless. So yeah, <laughs> so we have this moment where they just completely get everything out that they've been thinking, and I also like Daryl kind of calling out Beth on some of the things like you lost two boyfriends, you didn't even shed a tear. Uh, just a lot of hurtful things. Also, like, you try to kill yourself just, or you, you're cutting yourself for attention. Yeah. Like, all these Ooh. really harsh things mm. to say to her and just letting it out. Mm. So, uh, just, I, it was a good moment between them. Just, uh, sometimes you need those moments. And then, after they let it all out, they have this moment of coming back together as Daryl finally breaks down and starts opening up about everything. Yeah. And Beth ends up hugging him and yeah. <laughs> making everyone who's a fangirl jealous. Oh, they they threw things. They're broken televisions. Around. <laughs> <laughs> but I will uh, say, do you have Walking Dead insurance? <laughs> yeah. That was a great scene for both characters. They both had really good monologues. I mean, Daryl definitely talking about, you know, maybe you could have saved those people. And, and Beth just waking him up and going, I'm not a dead girl. I can handle myself. I mean, it was kind of cool when he's mm-hmm. shooting the crossbow and teaching her how to shoot a crossbow and she's finally like just gets a knife and just kills uh, mm-hmm. kills the zombie herself you know yeah. and, and what she says when killing's not fun what if that was my dad you know which I thought was really again all of this coming back to Herschel if you really look at it yeah yeah just to be devil's advocate though do you really think we needed a whole episode to find this out about the characters because we kind of already had a feeling about it like we kind of already knew that Daryl was being hard on himself from his silence you really didn't need the whole episode of build up just to get to that point is what I'm saying I, I honestly, I, I agree with you. And I know, mm. Nando, you love this episode. I, I do like what they did. I thought it was interesting what they did with the buildup of, like, Silence 2. Yeah. That arc of then all of a sudden everything explodes and they're all talking. It was that slow buildup that they used with the writing. But to me, again, like, the reveals were things that I felt like I already knew all these things. And yeah. it, it was just like, I, I like the backstory of the golf club, but I, I didn't feel like I needed a full episode dedicated to just them for this reveal. I will yeah. say that when we had those episodes with the governor, the backstory of the governor, uh, uh, late in mid-season, I was kind of bored. I wanted to see, you know, because it was kind of a boring half season, mm-hmm. honestly. And I do feel with the limited real estate that's left with this season to see a whole episode focused on two characters, that makes me nervous. I really liked the episode two weeks ago when it was like 10 minutes of them and then 10 yeah. minutes of right, like that's what Sasha I this would be. I yeah. want to see more of that. I really would hate, with only four episodes left, I really would hate if we just went like group by group until yeah. the end. Yeah. Until we get there. So, For next episode, at least, that's what it looked like. Well, and that's actually what I thought this out. episode would be, even though the previews only showed Daryl and Bath. I yeah. was like, oh, we'll probably be like the, mm-hmm. uh, the alternate groups. But that being said, I really had misgivings about this episode, th- thinking that this episode would just be the two of them. And I really did like the character development. I really did like it between, because especially with Beth, she's been underused. And uh, and we definitely got to see Daryl like you know really uh, yeah. you know n- this would Better be the kind life. of thing yeah I think I could see both these actors um, sending this demo reel to the Emmys to, to be nominated <laughs> yeah. I actually can for some reason it sounds yeah. interesting well it's definitely a great actor episode yeah. for sure yeah. for them to as actors to get to express all these different emotions that they go through and they have so many arcs or just I guess an arc but they had a full episode arc 
mm. and really seen through. So as an actor, it would have been a fantastic episode. Yeah. You know what would have been interesting if they would have done it for this episode with the with the country club? Is if the opening scene of the episode was actually no one we had seen before. It was actually at the country club with something mm -hmm. just starting to happen. And then and bam, they, they discover it. on it after everything's already over with, and maybe there's like one person left who's just bitten or something like that, mm. just to give us some more context, and that could have even led more to what's going on with the next city that Rick and everyone are going towards right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe see like some characters in that in the beginning that we'd see later. I don't know, just tie it more together with the other storylines in some way, as yeah. opposed to having it just be so standalone. Yeah, yeah, because I've been, I'm still thinking about that golf club. Like, I kind of want to know what happened there. I want to know, you know, what the situation was, even though those people aren't part of the show, it's yeah. Everything is intertwined. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting, yeah. too? Because the money was there, too. And I just noticed Joseph Boza put uh, money can be used for a lot of things. But remember, money is the root of all evil. Yeah. And and there's definitely something to be said. We've never really seen so much money in a location anyway. I, we've never seen yeah. Daryl tempted like that. And yeah. well, like someone said, there was it, it was about a class struggle, which we didn't really realize until we heard that information, that definitely this money comes to play into that. And uh, perhaps that's what caused the dissension in the ranks between the classes, all that money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, interesting to see Daryl go for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a after this entire moment and scene, speaking mm -hmm. of the money, uh, <laughs> we've got Beth deciding all of a sudden, we should burn it down when Daryl wants to Come go on, inside. Come on, let's burn this place <laughs> down. Burn it, burn it. <laughs> so all of a sudden, let's burn it down. And Daryl's like, okay. So they end up throwing the moonshine all over the house. And even though I assume they're still drunk at this point, let's go out into the open drunk and burn down the one place of protection we have. And this is a great idea. And let's burn our survival skills while we're at it. <laughs> yeah. So really? they, he does burn the money then, which is perhaps his past, as you guys were indicating. Perhaps that's him indicating he is uh, getting rid of who he was yeah. so he can be who he is. Well, I think that was and burning the house in the first place. Was right. something like a place he lived in? He right. had somewhere like so that. So burning that past down. Yeah. yeah. Although it is and interesting with, with the that money. theme, though, too, because a lot of times, yeah, it's like be who you are, not who you were. But for some people, they should be who they were, not who they are. <laughs> so it, it, in this, in, in Walking Dead, because you get the governor, it would have been better if he'd just been who he was, not who he is. And I think a lot of characters like take arcs for the worst, whereas Daryl took an arc for the best. So I think it just depends on the person. Well, when you look at that. I think the governor. Well, I mean, if you if you've some read the books, their humanity. If you read the books about the governor, you know he was such a meek person. Mm -hmm. There is some good in the governor uh, because the governor did save a lot of people. If you were if you were on his side and you let him lead mm -hmm. and you didn't threaten his authority, you could survive very well uh, under the governor. Well, maybe the governor's a bad example, but uh, say That's like say so there's a group that we're hopefully going to meet in the comics. Yeah, who became something that I'm really hoping we see. <laughs> and I would say that that was a turn for the worst. Well, how about so, those? Yeah. Thugs from last week's episode, for an sure, example. Sure, okay, those, those guys were last week's episode. Yes, perhaps not. Them. So I, I think some people become something worse, and some people become something better. So for mm. him, yes, that makes sense, but for a lot of other people in dire situations, you, it's not good what you become. Ho you hope that like in fight-or-flight situations, you become the better version of yourself, but yeah. some people don't. So yeah, anyways, as, as much symbolism as there was in this moment, it was... I thought it was really stupid. I'm sorry. It was just like, it's just when you think of every survival thing and you think of all the smart things they do in this show, like the beginning of the episode, it's just like, this is the one place where you can be safe. You guys are both drunk. Like, and you're going to burn down the one place of protection that you have? Hmm. Like, just wait till tomorrow morning at least. Yeah. Like, can, I just, can we say goodbye to our old selves tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. I'm, notice, yeah. I'm just noticing like there's... Also during the middle of the night when it's so easy to see for walkers. Oh, sorry, yeah. go on. There's just... There's just Scene, there's just at least one scene in every episode that just ticks me off with how dumb the characters are being in it. And it all started with Andrea's death when you just, we like the character and then we make, it makes us hate her because she can't get a damn key off the ground. She's just futzing around. I'm just like, it just made you hate her. Mm -hmm. And then like la or this episode when he's like hitting the walker with the golf club in the stomach, you're just like, hit him in the head. Hit him in the head. You don't, ah, just hit yeah. him in the head. <laughs> We need to get uh, the blood splatter on Beth's shirt so she could get pissed off about I know. it. Yeah. Uh, 
And then just burning the thing at the end, you're just like, come on, guys. Yeah. Don't turn this into stupid zombie movie where, yeah. oh, they're going to do something really stupid like that. Well, and also, then, like, the flip-off thing, too, is just like, oh, to me, that was honestly like a time. smack my head moment. I, think, I don't know if you I guys wish, like, enjoyed it, but it's just like, all right. I think when you're constantly under the threat of zombies 24-7, sometimes you just got to let loose. And you sometimes you got to, yeah, sometimes you lose it. And sometimes you got to say, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do this, even though it puts me at risk. I'm going to still be vil vil vigilant, but I am going to do do this. Look, we, there's putting yourself at risk and having fun and doing things, and then there's being straight up dumb. stupid. Like, just straight up, and that's what this was to me. I'm like, I get it, you gotta let loose, you gotta do things. Get, getting drunk, fine, have someone to watch, but have <laughs> someone have fun, you know? Yeah. Fine, but just like, something like that's just mm. so dumb to me. It it's was, just like, this is why people die. It was comic... You should know this. It was comically dumb. Yeah. Like, I was expecting them to end the episode on a still... Don't you yeah. forget about it? was kind of like a John Hughes yeah. uh, was, episode. Was, yeah. <laughs> and then someone's gonna hold up a radio. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, this won't lure the zombies box. at all. Yeah. If there wasn't zombies around, this could have been a really good romance story. It yeah. really could have been. Because the, the way my summer, how I spent <laughs> yeah. my summer, the with lake house. Like, it was like at, seven um, minutes of heaven. If you look at like Zombie Land, yeah, when they had their scene where they lost it and tore up that entire store, uh -huh. like, but that was done during the day. It was inside. Everything. Was protected, but right. when you do it in this situation, middle of the night in the woods, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, tearing up the yeah. store too, it's like there's no consequence to you, yeah, you're yeah. doing something ridiculous and like letting loose, but it's not something that's going to put you that at straight cool. danger, yeah. So, <laughs> I right, really, it was very I, cool. I really wish they had ended this episode with like them watching the burning house and Daryl being like. Well, now what the hell do we do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that yeah. would have been a good That would have like, been a like, like, they, do now. like, them realizing how dumb they just. I think yeah. it should have been just a free. They should have ended with a freeze frame with them giving the bird or something or, like no, that. No, them jumping oh, the there. Yeah, yeah. Jumping the yeah. Oh, there. oh yeah. So, uh, <laughs> ba Bahaha Bao saying, and that's how the, they burn the whole forest. <laughs> and yeah. it, Smokey the Bear comes, and he would yeah. not approve of this. Hmm. Pharrell has his hat though. Yeah, <laughs> Pharrell has Smokey the Bear's hat. He's, he wore it at there the Oscars. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he got his thing. No, yeah. he didn't wear a hat at the Oscars. No, he did for, no, he for did. his performance. He did. Oh, okay. For his performance, the hat. I don't know because we were watching Walking Dead instead of the Oscars. Well, I well, mean, that, that was, was before, before, but yeah, still. Yeah, we'll watch a little bit. Yeah. I was driving to watch The Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I was like, if I can't see the whole thing, I'm going to watch none of it! We're in L.A., we can, we're allowed to watch it. <laughs> Until Nando ruins it for all of us. No, I, I, I like watching the Oscars, it was just... Yeah. Watching Walking Dead came first. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. So, um... That, <laughs> Shout out to the Bill Murray zombie, by the way. Oh yeah, because it was Caddyshack zombie. Oh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, the yeah. one. That was the one who's hitting over and over again. I was yeah, like, that, that kind of reminded me of a Bill Murray that, zombie. That was a great. It's like when the golf club broke and he was using it to stab through things. Oh, that yeah. was yeah. awesome. Well, that, that, was that, that and also the the wine bottle that Beth found that she ended up get, losing because losing. the zombie came and because he yeah. had to use it to stab Dave. too. Yeah. Bioshock, the golf club. Oh yeah, yeah. more Bioshock connections. It comes full circle. <laughs> Great point. Would you kindly? <laughs> I do oh, want to know. I did that. I did want to know what the cartoon about the talking dog was that they were watching. With Two the stupid tweaker. dogs. So, Two stupid dogs. Yeah. I'm trying well, to it could about. have been so many cartoons. Yeah. There's like so many. There's so many cartoons with talking dogs. I felt like there must have been a little secret reference to something there. Could have been. Uh. Laura, and then one of the producers, his, his favorite show, another producer gives him crap about Scooby the whole time. and Scrappy Doo. Or something, yeah. Who knows? So, yeah. Two dogs. Uh, <laughs> Laura, Laura Jones saying, like the whole burning the house thing. If the forest burnt down, she, she was like, "That's one way to get rid of the walkers." And well, walkers are probably attracted to the flames. Yeah. Baha Val saying, "Someone call the firefighters." So wait, <laughs> shoot. Yeah, they're kind of missing. So hmm. whoops. So that kind of wrapped up this episode, though, with them flipping off the burning building and, and burning the '80s music Georgia. started playing, <laughs> and. Uh, then, with that said, I believe we have some news and gossip from Nando. Yeah. After Buzz TV News. We better get like the Beverly Hills Cop theme next episode. Well, I can finally announce this. Uh, hopefully, I can't find a date for it, but I can finally announce that uh, I was been doing some work on the Writers Room that's going to be on the Sundance Channel, uh, and season two starts in mid-April, and one of the episodes for uh, the Writers Room uh, doesn't feature The Walking Dead per se, but it talks about about graphic novels and TV and the trend of graphic novels. There seems to be more and more news about Gotham is coming out on Fox. It's being yeah. greenlit. Mm -hmm. That looks really exciting. Constantine. There's some other stuff coming out uh, too. So Please Robert tell me Kirkman, Gotham's taking place in Chicago. 
Oh, please. it is? I said, please tell me that. Oh, I don't know about that. But uh, one of the really awesome things is Robert Kirkman was on the show, and the show was really heavily Walking Dead. It was really their way of, of having Robert, Robert Kirkman on the show to talk a lot about The Walking Dead. So it's coming out on the Sundance channel. I'll, I'll definitely announce what day. You can look it up and you'll find out. I believe it's mid-May. Uh, it's between April and May. And I can tell you, I was there. Uh, one of the things that I thought was really, really awesome is uh, Kirkman was making fun of the zombie thing that we do oh, in really? our show, saying that's not what zombies do. People always think zombies do that. So I refuse to do that now. But uh, <laughs> yeah, although, unless you're a writer zombie, I think. Maybe you're writing. But what I really loved about the show. It's a Frankenstein zombie. It's like yeah, a Frankenstein zombie. But what I really loved uh, if you if you follow the comic books, you're really going to want to watch this show because we really break down in this show the differences between the graphic novel and the TV show. Robert Kirkman really breaks it down and he actually talks about the differences between the comics, like why they made certain decisions that were different. Like, for example, why sir, I don't want to spoil anything from the comics or the graphic novels if you haven't read it, but like certain characters who died earlier either in the comics than in the TV show or vice versa. And then also one of the major characters actually uh, has a, a major handicap uh, and he talks about, in, in the comics, and he talks about about the difference between having that character with a handicap in the comics and and him being perfectly fine in the TV show. Well, can you talk on the thing from season one that we were discussing before the show that was different? Are you able to talk about that? Sure. What? Which one? Um, um, it was something. Ah, oh, no, it's escaping me. Uh, now. It was it was the zombies keeping characteristics from their yeah. life. Oh, like, yeah, the yeah. Picks up the bear. Dog, yeah. No, he definitely goes. Uh, Kirkman actually went into detail about the zombie school and talks about how, uh, and that's how I think they came up with Zombies Don't Do This, and it's about bringing everyone and every zombie is individualistic. So part of the zombie school is pretty much uh, Nicotero talking to the people and trying to find their individual traits that would make them a zombie in real life and what they would do. So mm -hmm. it really is about each person, I guess when each person is an extra there, they really are putting themselves into the zombies. But I mean, what we were talking about before though, yeah. I, I guess was that in season one of the show, Steve was mentioning that all the walkers kind of have these, these moments where they Seem, they keep that trait from being human. It's kind of been dropped throughout the seasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they talk at all as to why uh, that might have happened? He talks a little bit about that, not too much. But uh, you know, one of the interesting things about season one that I could bring up he, that he talks about. First of all, I don't know if anyone knew this, but uh, Walking Dead was first pitched to NBC. Yeah. Really? Before AMC. Well, yeah. good thing AMC picked it, it up. It would have been a very different type of show. And one of the reasons why it didn't get picked up on NBC, and one of the things they did, that first scene with the girl. He shoots yeah. a girl in the he head shoots in the first the girl. scene. That was pretty yeah. much his way of saying, we're going to we're gonna do a lot of really messed up shit in this show. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and AMC actually was willing to put this show on the air with that kind of an opening. Well, that NBC was a won. terrible decision by AMC. It didn't play out well it for them did, at all. It, it did not work out. Horrible for them. Is it, is it true that, that the um, the two networks that it came down to were HBO and AMC? He, he didn't talk about HBO, but he definitely talked about the NBC thing. But again, uh, really, he talks a lot about the uh, just the, the process of writing between graphic novels and, and uh, cool. TV. And I, I would say it's really must-see. Also, Blair Butler, who uh, from G4, yep. she's on the show, too. And we also oh, have uh, uh, Algo and and Miles Miller, who were the creators of Smallville, they're also on the show talking a little bit about that. But it's heavy, heavy Walking Dead. So I love Blair Butler. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention a date in the future thing, but it's it's really cool. So with that said, yeah. let's go ahead and move on to some predictions. And now no. you're after Buzz <laughs> TV. Man, I didn't see drink. like for the new like Walker Walk. We get, you could just do this. Because they shuffle along. Yeah, they shuffle yeah. along. It's a visual. You can't show that when you, from the well, long the shot. It's like a visual for like a long yeah. shot. That's why we do it. <laughs> Nando, it's just a visual. I'm just like, sorry. You can get it. Sometimes you got to cheat things on. Uh, you know this, man. You're a producer. You should know that sometimes you have to cheat things for camera. <laughs> don't get. Don't take it personal. I'm taking it personally because I started it. <laughs> Let's yell. Okay, anyways. <laughs> But I back up from my mic, see? Okay, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the fact that... So next week, it looks like we're seeing Sasha, Maggie... That's all that matters. And Bob. So Sasha, Maggie, and Bob uh, are going to be featured next week's episode. Do you guys think that these are going to be the only three characters, or we're actually going to get some back and forth from anyone else? And I hope we see some other people, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Because just... Nothing against like what the way they're doing it, but I knew it would drag the show. Yeah, to go to those final two go home episodes where yeah. they knock everything out of the park. That's that's what I'm waiting to get yeah. to. Yeah, so it's just like ah, oh, they're dragging it out, they're dragging it out, they're dragging it out. You know, I I, I do want to know what's going on with Maggie. I do want to know what's going on with Sasha. Obviously, this Bob thing is going to get crazy, but. Mm. 
like, d does that really need a full episode? Well, I'm just needing to find the distillery, yeah. and he would have been fine. <laughs> uh, calling it the Bob Dies next episode. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can definitely see that happening. I, I guess, like... I, I like to an extent them doing this focus because it makes them all more vulnerable, mm -hmm. which I like that because before they were too powerful. So it's nice yeah. to see them at a state of vulnerability again. But I think it, I, I liked it more like we were talking about from a couple weeks ago, where it's different groups yeah. and you see a couple yeah. different groups. If per this episode. was a season with, tw if this was network television, if this was on NBC and it was mm -hmm. 23 episodes, I could deal with episodes like this that are focused on two or three characters. Mm -hmm. yeah. But knowing that there's only four or three episodes left and there's so many questions that we want. We want to see what this terminus is. Mm -hmm. We want to see what the hell's going on with Abraham and Eugene right now and, and Glenn, you know, and, and, and also Michelle. There's just so many different characters we want to see and it's such, like I said, limited real estate. All they have to do is bring in the group from the comics and everything will be perfect. I'm just hoping, I'm just hoping next episode is frantic. I want it to be yeah. really frantic. Yeah. I want it to be really dangerous. I want somebody to, to maybe even get bitten or something like that. Because I don't see Bob as the you kind know, of guy to get killed right away. I think yeah. he'll get bitten and be like the guy who hides it from the group. Considering um, considering the previews were all in the fog, it really feels like a bottle episode. Like let's not let's just put them in the fog. You and your bottle episode. Let's do, let's just put them <laughs> yeah. in the fog. Let's not spend any <laughs> money on the set. People have to save money, yeah. <laughs> but then they'll burn down a house again. Anyone, yeah. Yeah. Anyone who's played like Halo and played the zombies on that, yeah. when when the base that you have that's impenetrable randomly falls for like a really dumb reason mm -hmm. it's after that where the game gets interesting where everyone's like scrambling running around trying to yeah. like save themselves that's what I need to see I need to see people scrambling or running around I need them to come upon a big group of people who are also getting killed at the moment so they can even split up even more yeah. and then maybe even lose one or two of them in it that's I mean, what I want to see. I want to see frantic. Some urgency, some some danger. Yeah, we just saw, we just saw. Yo, let's hang out with moonshine, burn the house down, and just walk into the night. <laughs> yeah. Safe. Like, it's fine. Maggie's gonna be an episode. This will be a great episode. It, it's gonna be it's David's gonna be favorite episode. It'll be the best episode of the season. Yeah, it'll be yeah. David's favorite episode. I'm also gonna say one thing. I think we're gonna meet a character with their group that will go away after next episode, but then come back as somebody who will recognize later next Gone. season. Like, I think, uh, mm. not going into the comics, but the main guy in the comics right now, I think they'll run into a character like that without knowing who he is, and then they'll get split up sure. again, and then they'll recognize him later. When I, I do punk. think, I, I don't think it's going to be only the three of them next episode, but I don't think they're going to cut to other groups. I think it'll just be Sasha, Maggie, Bob. I agree they're probably going to meet someone else. And I... I don't know if I think Bob's going to die next week because I feel like they want to make you think he's going to and keep on playing that card yeah. of making you think and allowing him to screw things up in a sense. I, want, I think that, they want to play that card a little his bit His alcoholism further. is still a good um, right. yeah, a good a that's, that's, that's why I think yeah. he's going to be bitten and hide it. That's that's my point is because Ooh. the alcoholism okay, shows... So maybe not die next week, but get bitten next Yeah, because the alcoholism shows his weakness, shows that he is a weak person personality-wise as mm. well. Mm -hmm. So when he has that, he is the type of person to try to protect himself over, over the rest the of the group and yeah. covering that. That's right. what I, yeah. yeah. I like that. I like that. We'll see. Yeah, I think that's, that could, I, I, that's an interesting prediction. I think that could happen. Mm. I agree. So, with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this along with the Oscars and everything else going on this weekend. Once again, guys, I'm Dave Klein. You can find me on Twitter at the Dave Klein. That's K-L-E-I-N. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, okay, wait, it's all you, you guys go this direction. Yeah. I, didn't know what I thought we were going that way. It's called whoever wants, to pop in. whoever wants to jump in, I'm Rome the Ruler. You can find me on Twitter at Rome the Ruler. R O M E the Ruler. I'm Stephen Lemieux. You can find me on Twitter at Stephen Lemieux, S T P H E N L E M I U X, or on this week's Helix After Show, uh, Mondays at 6 p.m. And we're also going to have Miguin from the show in here this week or next week, as well as the Twisted After Show Wednesdays. Nice. I, I, to my defense, I don't know which way to go ever, any week, oh, anyway. Cool. Yeah. So uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nandovel, N A N D O V E L. Also, you can find me here for True Detective, Hannibal. Bates Motel, which is returning, Blacklist, and the following. I think that's all of them. See, you guys plug you got like your six shows. shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got, plug yours, man. I got, I got WWE SmackDown. Yeah, Friday night, of course, and a bunch of new shows coming up on BHL on Black Hollywood Live. So yes, you can catch them on Black Hollywood Live. Yep. All yep. right. I got us Game of Thrones coming up in a month. All right, Woo! guys. See you next week. Later. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Let's uh, burn, it burn it down! Burn it down! <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.
Thank you for watching After Buzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.